effectively looks to close at the top two, Dumbo Hole is last chance with top six and the home of cricket will be the home of the playoffs. All that and more and match week 25 preview show. Yeah, people, welcome back to JPL and happy Easter to my YouTube family. Well, when I eat up too much bun, or well, thank God it's also a weekend of football. Yeah, man, so the full slate of match will be going on Sunday and some Monday nighters are also on the deck. Uh, so before we get into it, of course, we have the local news and it's only one piece of item this time as the PFJL and the league has confirmed the players will start on April 22nd and the matches will be held at Sabina Park. Now, without no official confirmation, but thinking about him last year, all matches leading up to the finals seem to be at Sabina Park, meaning both legs of the quarterfinals and both legs of the semifinals. Now, the rumor has it now is that the final itself will be at the National Stadium, but we await why some of the teams may, may feel a bit aggrieved that you know they have to give up home field advantage in one of the most important parts of the season you know for each leg i must admit that the vibes and atmosphere is electric when these matches are played at sabana park so i can see why the league returns back there anyway it will be a spectacle when it comes april 22nd that's it for the local news as we will now look into which team will be a part of the playoff party come april 22nd I will start with a team that is on the outside looking in and that is Dumbo Holding as they welcome Cavaliers to the Dumbo Holding Sports Complex. So Dumbo Holding was dealt a big blow to their top 6 hopes when they lost last week to Waterhouse, their nearest rivals for the same spot and have to win in this game and hope for some help in both places to try and get back into it before the end of the rounds. But they will welcome a Cavalier team that got their groove back after dispatching Treasure Beach by 5-0 on the road and we'll see them again on the road here. The good thing about Cavalier as well is that they're fully rested, that are fully rested week and we'll see Richard King back into the fray. So it won't be easy for Dumbo Holding to get the best of them even though they have Nicholas Nelson back playing again. So this is one of those matches I feel is going to be a big top match to keep an eye on and of course when last time they met was on New Year's Eve and Cavalier got the best of Dumbo Holding by 1-0. A similar action again might do Cavalier just good. Who are also fighting for that top 2 spot. So Dumbo Holding won't have it easy and if they lose this one, I feel that they're going to officially be out of the playoffs. Anyway, that's again Dumbo Holding taking on Cavalier at the Dumbo Holding Sports Complex 3.30 this Sunday. We'll move on to the team they're chasing and that's Waterhouse. Are they travel to the Anthony Sporting Complex to take Ambulance United. So Mullines is officially safe and they could relax a bit but their main striker and captain Jason Wright is in the golden shoe race so I don't expect him to let up at all. So it won't be that necessarily that easy for Waterhouse but Mullines have an issue with the defence all season and it will be interesting to see if they can keep out an informed Javien Bryan and Andre Fletcher. Those two of course are what people will look to to prepare Waterhouse but I still say keep an eye on Mitchell to see if he can come back into some good form before the playoffs. A win here will do them very close to the playoff line, of course. But they have to keep an eye on not only Dumbo Holding, but, but Montego Bia United as well. But what else can get it done here, I feel. But I'll, I'll tell you more in the predictions at the end of the video. But for now, their last results saw Waterhouse and animal lines both drawing one all. So let us see what happens here in this picture. So that's the Mullines playing host to at the Anthony Spawning Complex this Sunday at 3.30 p.m. We we'll move on now to the race to top two and that's where Tivoli currently sits and sitting pretty. Now they are giving a gift I feel as Lionel are the team that will be hosting them this Sunday. Now Lionel I feel is already packed up their bags and gone home so, I, it's, not, so it's not even much for, for me to preview for them. Honestly, there's nothing, absolutely nothing for them put here to play for. I do seem that they actually care about pride at this point. The team they're surging and beating in the last four and they're looking good for that top two spot. On the drum weight, I don't think they're going to take their eye off the ball and underestimate Lyman at all. So I expect them to come up flying in this game. I'll tell them exactly where I feel in the prediction at the end of the show, but the whole world should be expecting a Tivoli victory here. In their last meeting, Tivoli ran out 3-1 winners on New Year's Eve. So, yeah, this one is probably a pretty straightforward and a big blow for Tivoli Chasers for the top two. But we will see the ball this round and you never know. This is Lyman's last home game and they might want to go up with a bang. Again though, 
That would be Limehall House in Tivoli Gardens at Droxel Sports Complex this Sunday at 3.30pm. We're going all the way to Clarendon for our next match you now and his home line host in the fan challenge more pleasant. More players can officially show up that's number one spot, but it's a far conclusion at this point, really. Uh, while Omaline basically just want to see out the rest of the season and like to give their fans something for, for their final home game to feel good about. They do have a new star in Clear Clark on display, and I expect him to buzz around again for this match. But more players is playing so well, and I feel that they will come good in this one as well. So no big permutations for this game, really, but it could be a nice watch, especially for those in Clarendon. So again, that's his humble lion hosting more pleasant at 3.30 p.m. this Sunday. For the final game on Easter Sunday, and it's a big one, it's Arne Gardens hosting Portmore United. Now these two teams were very close to that, that top two spots and both of them were dealt a big blow last weekend in Draxall. Arne lost to the defending champions and set them back down the table, but Portmore were stunned by very United in the last minute of the game to see them tumble down the table as well. There's still a chance at top two, they just need Tivoli to slip up, but they also need to defeat each other in this big clash here at Antonis Point Complex. Arnett is a different breed at home, honestly, and they're flying in the last two home games. So, but Palmer, of course, have showed all season that they're not the easiest team to break down. So this probably is the game of the round, and it will be a good watch to see what happens. It will be on Sports Max, so it will be a good Sunday display on TV, and it will be great to see what happens. The last result, in Fernita Park, Portmore ran out 2-0 winners over Arnett. But I do think Arnett a much better team at home. So let's, let us see what happens here. As Portmore does have Trevon Walsh back, while Arnett should welcome back Kareem Dixon into the fray. So it should be a big match. I want to tell you any predictions of what I think will happen. But for now, that is Arnett hosting Portmore United at 6 p.m. at the Anthony Spalling Complex this Sunday. So now for the Easter Monday Nighters, a big match will lead the way in the double header is Harborview will play in host to Montague Bay United at the Anthony Spalding Complex once more. Harborview uh, had a terrible season, uh, their season is their 50th year, so they were probably hoping to still see out the game good. They didn't play too, too badly against Tivoli last time, but they were just simply toothless in attack, and that's been an issue all year after Bradford left. While Montague Bay United is finding the results, they find a way to squeeze by and they are playing well, but this will be a, a decent test for them on the road. This is a must win for Montego Bay United, especially if you feel that Waters will get the best of all lines. So Moby are so close to that top six that I don't think they want to drop it here. So it will be a good watch to see what happened. The last time they faced each other was again on New Year's Eve when Montego Bay United was held to all to have a view. So you never know in this game. But we'll see what happens. It will be a good watch on TV as well. And again, that's half of you hosting Montego Bay United on April 1st at 3 p.m. Now, for the final game on March week 25, and that would be Very United hosting Treasure Beach. Yes, it's not the greatest of games to close out the round, but there's still some talent on display. And with, and with the pressure off for both teams, you know, Treasure Beach already been relegated and Very already been safe. They might produce some good football here. Various may actually play some decent football, but is having issues with finishing. But they should be buzzing and feeling confident after that surprise win over Portmore last week. While Treasure Beach has to find some way to get them funds and their ownership some pride after that devastating loss at home last week. They will see what they can do here. They probably can see this as a good chance to improve their record before they go down to the tier 2. So again, the last time they met, very run out 2-0 winners in St. Elizabeth. So let us see what happens here on April 1st. And we're very play host at Trinidad Beach at the Anthony Spalling Sports Complex at 5.30 p.m. So yeah, people, nice later matches. Of course, the race with top two and the race with top six is where all eyes should be on. Uh, let's look at the predictions right away. So Dumbo Holding will be hosting Cavalier. Ah, tough, tough match with Dumbo Holding. A uh, game they have to win. But Cavalier also need to win this and they're buzzing with their confidence once again. So I see Cavalier winning this one, 1-0 on the road over Dumbo Holland. More Lions versus Waterhouse. It seems like each time these two teams meet is a draw, but More Lions, who, apart from Jason Wright, Golden Boot race, don't really have much to play for, and Waterhouse buzzing lately, I see Waterhouse winning this one 2-1. Two, one. Lime Hall versus Tivoli might be the easiest prediction I get all year round, I see a 5-0 victory for Tivoli in this one on the road. Humble line versus more pleasant. Uh, it depends how serious both sides take it. 
uh, I'm going to see this might be one place in this easing them way into the playoffs. So it could be a one all draw here in Clarendon. No, a most harder game to predict. On it, taking on Portmore United. On it, are very strong attacking wise and defensive wise at home. Portmore, just very good at defensively anywhere they go. This one is a tough call. I will give probably on it the edge here with their full slate of attackers back. On it, we edge of Portmore 2 1 in this one. For Monday now, Harborview versus Montego Bay United. Harborview have an issue with creating and creating chances and finishing them. While Moby Yard is simply buzzing and know there's a must win. I predict another 2-1 victory, but this time in the way of the visitors, as Moby will come away 2-1 winners. And then the last game, Veer versus Treasure Beach. Uh, as I said, Veer are good in the build-up, not really finishing. Uh, Treasure Beach, well, it's not any good at anything at all lately. I see a 1-0 victory for Veer in this one. So yeah, guys, that is Match Week 25 preview show. That's the predictions I got. And the Easter weekend, so we should all get out and watch these matches. Some big matches are on hand. Anyway, that would do it for us here at Jump Hill Fan. If you're new here, please like, subscribe, and share as we look to close up the season. And we should be back here Tuesday night to do the review show for Match Week 25. For anything else for the Premier League overall, you're already at the right place. Jump Hill Fun. Big up yourself, YouTube, and again, happy Easter, everyone.